In this video, we will talk about uh, GNSS positioning. GNSS means Global Navigation Satellite System. You will probably use all the time uh, this type of systems because uh, the GPS, the worldwide famous GPS, is uh, a GNSS uh, example. So, this means using satellites for location purposes. And when we say location, we mean finding the latitude, the longitude, uh, this is the, the terrestrial coordinates, and also the altitude. This is the height over the, the surface of the, of the Earth. So, as I said before, the most important GNSS uh, system is the GPS, the Global Positioning System, developed by the, by the Department of Defense of the USA uh, more or less 20 years ago. So, the approach, uh, the most common approach uh, of all of these systems is to have uh, some of the data, later we will see what means data in this context, uh, to have some of this data open. And part of this data will be restricted for military use only. This means that the military applications will have much more accuracy uh, of the location than the civilian uses. This is uh, the philosophy behind every GNSS, but the European one, the Galileo system. As you, will, uh, as you already know, uh, there are a lot of applications of this uh, GNSS, like uh, civil aviation, this is uh, uh, tracking uh, planes. Also, the aerospace uh, archaeologists use uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, information systems, geographical information system based on, on GPS. Also is used to synchronize uh, devices, uh, having a, a GPS uh, module into the, into the device, and this GPS uh, provides the, the, the timing for, for, this, for this equipment. It's a very, very simple way to to have everything with the same with the same clock. Also, uh, to track fleets of planes, uh, tracks, or uh, cars, or whatever you you have in your fleet. Also, for social networking, not uh, not uh, every not uh, all the applications needs to be uh, industry related. Also, for guiding for guiding people, uh, for gaming, uh, like the very famous. Uh, uh, Pokemon One game, also for marketing, for marketing applications, for emergencies, uh, and a very, very large etc. So this is, uh, I assume that you already know, this is a very, a very, very useful tool. In this table, uh, you can see that uh, the GPS is, it's not the, the only uh, GNSS technology uh, available now. Uh, perhaps uh, it's the, of course, it's the, it's the most famous, it's the, it's the most used, uh, but uh, there is also uh, the GLONASS system, the Russian GLONASS system, is also uh, used in, the, in, this, in this country and, and some of its neighbors. And the other systems that you have in the table, the Galileo, it's not uh, still working. It's scheduled to be fully operative in uh, 2020. It's not a military system, it's uh, a civilian system. And it's very, very similar to, to GPS. Uh, GLONASS GPS and Galileo are very similar between them. Some of them require uh, more satellites. Uh, but uh, they have more or less the same frequencies, very, very close uh, one uh, to, it to the others. Uh, and the orbits of the satellites are also very similar. There are medium orbit uh, satellites in, in these three cases. Also, you have the Beidou. I, I expect that I have uh, <laughs> uh, 
uh, said it in, a, in, a, in the right way, the Chinese uh, GNSS system. Uh, it has uh, the first generation, which is uh, already uh, working, but it only covers China and uh, its uh, nearby countries, and uses geostationary satellites. And the second generation, which is also expected to be working in 2020, uh, it's uh, more or less similar to GPS and Galileo. And also uh, Japan and India have uh, their two uh, systems, uh, their own systems, and in, in the, the, the Japanese one, it's not an, let's say, a standalone system, uh, because it's intended to improve the accuracy of the GPS and the Galileo and the Galileo systems. So it's an augmentation uh, technology to provide a better service in uh, in Japan uh, for this uh, for this GPS and Galileo. It uses only three or four uh, satellites. It's expected to be working in 2017. And finally, the the Navic, the Indian system which uh, is intended to, to work only in the, in the Indian area and uh, it uh, comprises uh, seven geostationary satellites. So from now on we will focus on GPS because uh, it's the most uh, uh, famous and the most common uh, technology and also because more or less all of them are quite similar. So explaining the basics of GPS, uh, you will understand very good uh, uh, all, the, all the others. So the first uh, basic concept that you need to know is that to locate the receiver, you need to demodulate the signal from at least three satellites. This is a geometry problem. It's an inter a sphere intersection problem. So if you intersect two spheres, you will have a 3D surface. If you intersect three satellites, you will have a couple of points. But if you consider that your device is on the surface of the Earth, you will have the fourth sphere. The Earth will be the fourth sphere. And you will reduce this, this uncertainty to only one point with more or less accuracy. These signals that you receive are transmitted by the satellites and contain the position of the satellite and a very high accurate timestamp. So the satellite broadcasts its position and also the time at of this uh, broadcast. So this is the information that the receivers will have from one, two, three or more satellites. Part of this information, as I said before, is private. It's encrypted. So military receivers, which are able to decrypt these information, will be able to have a more precise estimation of the position and the timing of the satellite. This high accuracy timing, which is uh, a critical issue in, in GNSS is provided by using atomic clocks. These atomic clocks give us a precision and accuracy of one nanosecond. So how does the receiver, what does the receiver to find the distance from the satellite to the receiver itself. So, what it does is to measure the time distance, the time difference between the transmission, the timestamp broadcasted by the satellite, and the time at which you are receiving the, the, the data. So, you will have a certain milliseconds or more, more precisely, some nanoseconds. These nanoseconds, or these microseconds, this fraction of seconds, will need to be converted into a distance. And you will have, if you only see one satellite, you will have a sphere of 
positions, of possible positions of this satellite. If you then receive the, the information from a second satellite, you will have that your position will be in the intersection of these two spheres and so on. So to have only one point as a solution of this intersection of spheres, you will need more satellites. So, as I said before, it's a geometrical problem. But first of all, you need to understand how this information is codified, the data structure, by the satellite. Of course, the more satellites you see, the higher accuracy you will have. There are a lot of algorithms to improve this uh, estimation of the position of the receiver. And as you will probably, uh, as you will, as you already know, all of this sounds very easy, but it's not uh, easy at all. This receiver is a very, very complex system, and also there are a lot of uh, problems here. There are ionospheric effects that distort the signal, affecting the reception, and damaging the estimation of the, of the position. Sometimes uh, you don't have four uh, visible satellites. Think uh, about urban canyons, very, very uh, large uh, uh, buildings, and you will, the, the receiver is only able to see perhaps only one satellite, so that's not enough to, to locate yourself. And also, uh, you can have a uh, Doppler effect in the receiver if you are moving at a, at a very uh, high speed. So, the implementation of a GPS receiver exceeds by much the scope of this course. Indeed, it's a very, very complex project, not only in the software field, also in the hardware. To, com to, to implement a GPS receiver with the RTL SDR, you will not only need to have a, a very complex software uh, product installed, you will also need an active antenna. When uh, I say active, I mean uh, uh, an amplifier, a low noise, uh, noise amplifier uh, uh, with your antenna to, to, to receive these signals which are very, very uh, very uh, close to the noise. This is very low power uh, signals. Also, to, c to do all these connections, the, the amplifier and the antenna, you will need to do some, uh, uh, you know, some tinkering uh, to connect it properly to the, to the PC. So, if anyway, if you have uh, still some interest on this, on this application, uh, you are very lucky because in the software defined GPS uh, blog uh, you have uh, an implementation of this of this uh, GPS receiver it does not use MATLAB it uses uh, a different uh, a different framework but uh, in this in this uh, website you have all the details related to this to this project it's a very very advanced uh, uh, work but it's uh, worth uh, uh, reading it in this course, uh, we are happy if you understand the basics of these of this, uh, GPS receivers. So let's see the architecture of the GPS receiver. Uh, we have, uh, in general terms, uh, three blocks. Each, each one of these blocks is, is very complicated uh, by itself, but the first one is the acquisition uh, block. And here you only need to do, uh, let's say, a rough uh, determination of both the satellite frequency and the and the code and the the unique code of each of each uh, satellite. In the second step, the tracking one, you need to 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 maintain the connection with the satellite to with with a, during a, a short period of time to to depurate to debug uh, or to refinate this data uh, that you have from the from the previous step. The, the code of the satellite and the frequency 
to, to, to see how, how these parameters change and demodulate uh, the signal. Also, in the final stage, uh, you will need to, to calculate the position, the position of the receiver, uh, the coding, the message of uh, every satellite that you are able to see, uh, and to uh, finally obtain uh, the, the location, your location. So, uh, as we mentioned in previous videos, the frequencies, the GPS frequencies, are within the RTL's scope. It's the 1.575 GHz. Also, the capabilities of the GPS receiver, the 8 uh, bits uh, and the 2.8 uh, mega, mega samples per second uh, as for the same rate, it's enough for a GPS receiver. But uh, there are a lot of problems uh, to complete uh, in a successful way these, these applications. Signals are very, very uh, low power. They are, they are noise-like. So, as I said before, you will need an active antenna. The RTL oscillator is not very accurate, so you will need to correct this effect, uh, these parasitic uh, intermediate frequencies that may appear, you will need to, to remove them uh, by software. So it's something uh, uh, more that you need to do. And in any case, uh, as we said before, it's a very, very complex uh, software. So to end, to end this video, uh, here we have the, the, the conclusions. Uh, all these uh, GNSS or almost uh, the most uh, popular uh, GNSS uh, examples, the GPS, Galileo and, uh, and the Chinese one, uh, have uh, between 20 and 30 medium Earth orbit satellites that broadcast their time-stamped position. This is their, their own position and also the time at uh, they are uh, broadcasting uh, it. It's a very complicated uh, digital signal processing in the receivers. So that's uh, an explanation of why your mobile phone, when you active you activate the, the GPS, uh, it's, uh, it begins to, to, to take a lot of uh, power from your battery. Uh, also, the accuracy of these systems depends on the axis, uh, if it's civil or military. Also, uh, you know that there are a lot of uh, different applications. The only worldwide GNSS uh, is the GPS and perhaps the GLONASS, but it's uh, harder to find uh, uh, devices uh, able to work with this system. Also, uh, as we said before, the GPS frequencies are within the RTL scope, so you have uh, projects, successful implementations of a GPS receiver in the in a RTL. And as you will find soon if you go and check these websites, it's a very complex task to implement in a, in a RTL. Here you have some references uh, to, to see more about uh, GPS receivers in software-defined radios and also in the RTL uh, hardware. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.